the next kind of a surprise which uh, the simplex method can uh, bring in real life is called degeneracy and cycling. So let me again show you a concrete example. Let us consider an optimization problem where we have uh, actually three inequality constraints converted to equality. So what we might see here is that this final constraint really only says x2 must be smaller than uh, 3. That's what the final constraint says. And let us solve this problem using the simplex method. So first comes the simplex tableau, which is already quite familiar to us. And then we can actually classify the current solution because each iteration of the simplex algorithm leads one vertex of that feasible set. Essentially, that, that vertex that we are starting from is where we have the three variables equal to zero. Initially, those three variables are those which are our original optimization variables. We set those to zero, so the initial solution is zero, zero. And then we set the uh, basic variables to the right hand sides of the corresponding constraint. So here we usually have only positive values if the problem is, uh, is well posed. And we know also that the uh, value of the objective function is zero. Well, that's quite obvious because x1 and x2 are zero. Okay? So let us perform the pivot. So which of these variables will be changed? We are looking at which of these entries here is most negative. So that's x1. And then the column, uh, sorry, the row. So we are looking at these coefficients, right? 6 over 3, 2 over 1, 2 over 3 over 0. That's kind of tricky. But that's, let's say it's infinity, OK? So the smallest one is actually, actually here, uh, you see, and uh, actually this is also something, what is the impact of heuristics? Here we have two entries where the ratio is the same. 6 divided by 3 is the same as 2 divided by 1. Okay, so here is where the solver might apply some randomization because it has to choose between these two values. So let us just say that we pick the second row as the pivoting one. Okay? And we perform the pivot and we obtain a new solution. Is this an optimal solution or just a feasible solution? It is just a feasible solution because we have one entry which is negative. And we can actually also say what the solution is, what the current vertex is. So what we do is we classify the variables on uh, free and uh, basic variables. So the free variables is where we have multiple non-zero entries. We set those variables to zero. And the remaining variables are just given by the right hand sides of the constraints. And notice that something kind of interesting happens. Before, we always had for, that for the basic variables, the corresponding values were only positive. However, now we have one basic variable, which is x3, whose value is 0. And 0 is usually the value of the free variable. And this is exactly what degeneracy is about. Essentially, what, what degeneracy says is that x3 should have been a free variable. It shouldn't have been a basic variable. Okay? That's what degeneracy is about. And we also know what the value of the objective function is, and we know it's, uh, it's not optimal. Okay? So we call a solution of a, of a simplex iteration a degenerate solution if some basic variable takes zero value. Okay? That's what we call a degenerate solution. One problem that we have there is that when, when doing that ratio now, we would need to divide 0 by something and there are problems. Here, I mean, if, if, you, if for any reason here it would not happen. But if you would choose x1 as the pivoting variable, we would be dividing 0 by 0. And that's uh, like the nightmare from a mathematical point of view. So uh, we had a degenerate solution. So let us look at what are the consequences of problem being degenerate. OK, uh, let me go in further and let me record on the whiteboard what was the solution that we have obtained here. 
So x1 was 2, x2 was 0, 0, 0, and 3. Okay? That was the solution, and the objective function here was 4. Okay, so let us perform one more iteration. So obviously we are choosing x2 as the pivoting variable. And here we have actually 0 of, uh, divided by 4 as one candidate and 3 divided by 1 as the other candidate. Okay. So obviously this one is the, is the smallest ratio, smallest non-negative ratio that we have to consider. So we perform the pivot and we obtain this table now. Is this an optimal solution? No, because we have a negative entry here. But we can at least classify the variables, right? So we have x3 and x4 as the free variables, so we set them to 0. So here we had 0, 0. And the remaining basic variables, we set them to the right-hand side of the corresponding constraint. Okay? So x2 would be 2. Uh, sorry, x1 would be 2, x2 would be 0, and x5 would be 3. And the objective uh, function is 4. So notice what has happened. We have performed one more pivot operation, and we have obtained the same solution as before. The only change was that, if we go back, Let me also classify the variables. So x1 was a basic variable, x2 was free, x3 was basic variable, x4 was free, and x5 was a basic variable. And now after this new pivot operation, we have x1 as the basic, x2 as basic, x3 as free, x4 free, and x5 basic. So actually, the only difference here is what the additional pivot operation has done is that it has changed x2 from free to basic variable and x3 from basic to free variable. That was the only change that we have achieved by performing one pivot operation. And actually, that's all, uh, that's all the consequence of the degeneracy. So the degeneracy here was that some basic variable was equal to 0. So also this solution now is degenerate because we have x2 as a basic variable and its value is 0. And we have, we have performed one iteration to obtain the same solution. Actually, in rare cases, what can happen is that we will perform more and more pivoting operations and we still find the same solution over and over. So Jan, this is what answers your question. The simplex uh, algorithm, in theory, can run into an infinite loop if the problem is degenerate. Then we might perform just additional pivoting operations and we will never find a better solution. Fortunately, this doesn't happen too often in practice, despite degeneracy. So let us continue with... Uh, transforming this simplex tableau further. So obviously we have to change x4. So uh, we choose x4 as the pivoting variable and now we look at the ratios. So uh, the ratio here that we have to look at is uh, for the third row. We don't need to consider this one. Why? What does, the, what does this coefficient say? Since it's, it's negative, it essentially means by increasing x4, we will go away from the constraint. Okay? And we are only afraid of like, going in, into the direction of the constraint. So we don't have to consider this one because we have a negative entry here. So we have only two candidates and clearly this one, this ratio here is smaller than the ratio between these two numbers. So we perform the pivoting operation and let's do the classification. Okay? So what are the three variables here? 3 and 5. And what are the values of those three, uh, three variables in this iteration? So the three variables we always set to 0. Okay. The basic variables are the remaining ones, and uh, we fix them to the corresponding right-hand sides of the constraint. Okay. So that's this solution. And the value of the objective function is 5. And is this an optimal solution? Yes, it is. All entries in the final row are non-negative. 
So what we have seen is that we have started from the initial vertex. We have performed the first pivoting operation. We have found some solution. We have performed the set, uh, second iteration, and we have found no improvement in the objective function. However, the third iteration then has found a better solution. So essentially, the generacy is a, is a wrap up. The generacy happens when we have some basic variable, which in the corresponding simplex iteration is zero. Now, these the generacies, as we have seen, might lead to cycling. Okay, so for multiple iterations, the algorithm returns the same output. In the worst case, the cycling will never finish. Okay, so we, we might run into an infinite loop in some uh, strange situations. However, fortunately for us, while the generacy is frequent. Essentially what the generacy is, is it slows down your algorithm because you have to perform several iterations without improving the solution. So the generacy is very frequent in linear programming problems. However, this cycling, this infinite loop, is extremely rare. Okay? Even better for us, as we have seen in those tables, uh, I, that's why I insisted so much on using the fractional coefficients here. So let me show you. Okay. Like here. Notice that we have 1 over 3 and so on. We might, of course, expand it to a floating point number, 0 0.333 and so on. And obviously, when we would implement this algorithm in software, we would, at certain points, stop the expansion, okay? because we have only a finite number of decimal places. And then we would need, uh, or the numerical algorithm would perform some kind of a rounding here. Okay? And actually, it's this rounding which helps quite a lot to stop cycling in practice. So uh, it's the inaccuracy of numerical schemes which often takes care of an important theoretical issue. So cycling is a very nasty kind of theoretical property of the algorithm. The simplex algorithm can run into cycling. However, it does usually when we do precise representation of all numbers in the simplex tableau. When we start rounding, we very often eliminate cycling. But again, often means probably there are still some instances where the algorithm can run into this loop. It's just that usually in practice, this is not a big problem. 